Hey guys, it's Coach Spilo. This is gonna be my five tips and tricks for life with your video. Now, one big disclaimer, I do have a feeling that a lot of things are likely to change about this hero. I expect that whether it's specific number adjustments, the way that certain mechanics work in game, I have a feeling that there's gonna be a lot of changes moving forward. So just keep in mind that as of April, 2023, the first week of his release, these things are accurate, but they are subject to change. So what I'm gonna be doing is giving you guys one tip for his each of his abilities, including his ultimate, and also discussing a little bit of his weapon play. And I'm actually gonna start with the weapon play. Number one because I do think that one of the weakest aspects of this hero at this point in time is how uncomfortable and difficult it is to swap between doing damage and doing healing and that swapping back and forth is an extremely important part of this playstyle. You need to be able to quickly go from doing damage or healing I guess to be able to doing damage immediately afterwards. Now in mouse on PC you're gonna be doing this with your scroll wheel to initially do it just like you swap with your mercy gun. The problem with that is in most grips of the mouse, you're gonna have your middle finger, the, the finger that uses the scroll wheel, is gonna be on the mouse two button. So it's actually not very easy for you to swap between doing healing and damage without taking your finger off of one button and putting it on another. That takes too long. That in, too many inputs takes too long. So what I recommend you guys doing, at least giving a shot, is having your keys bound to your weapon swap on mouse two, so your right mouse button, right? and your damage primary fire on mouse one. So in other words, I'm gonna be doing mouse one, mouse one, mouse one, tap mouse two, right? And then now I hold mouse one and there's my healing. And the reason why I like this is because it doesn't take any extra movement from my fingers and the alternate is really, really fast. The other little benefit you guys may notice from this is damage. Just by swapping and holding down mouse one, I'm already charging up. So I wish I could show you this mouse one, but I'm actually gonna show it to you really quick. So watch my screen. I'm gonna move my camera really fast here. Watch my screen here. So right now I'm holding down mouse one, right? Holding down mouse one, okay? So I'm holding down mouse one. Bang, there's the heal. I tap mouse two, immediately doing damage. Holding down mouse one. Tap mouse two, immediately charging up healing. I don't even have to really click and release my mouse one. It's already doing damage. So I can just keep swap alt alting back and forth, back and forth. Now, you're not likely to be doing it that extreme in an actual game, but being able to swap those inputs that quickly is really, really, really important. And as of now, this seems to be the easiest way for me to be able to do it personally. Now, that does mean that you're probably going to be need to be binding a few other cooldowns differently. For example, I believe the default is, I think, is that the is that your uh, your your ramp? I think it's actually your, your pedal lifter is on right click. But either way, I have pedal on E for me because it's easily inaccessible. I have my grasp on, grasp on control. Now, if you have crouch on control, you might put it on C so that you can push it with your thumb. That one works for me as well. And then I have kept dash on shift. So the big one though for me is find a way to make that swapping back and forth easy, simple, and it doesn't take a lot of inputs. It doesn't take a lot of move because you need to be able to do that very quickly. Like, oh shoot, this guy needs healing, bang. See, even that, it's too slow, right? Quickly swapping back and forth. Okay, number one. Number two, we're gonna move on to the abilities, is your shift. Now this tip is actually really not that complicated. And the way I recommend using shift is don't until you need it. Um, I think this hero's mobility is really lacking in terms of self-survivability. You don't really have a Moyer Fated Guardian Angel. Um, you don't have a Biotic Nade, really. So you're limited not only with your mobility in terms of your lateral mobility, in other words, you get pressured, what do you do? And you're also limited options in terms of keeping yourself alive. Shift isn't massive, but it often will be enough to kind of keep you alive, especially versus dive hero. So if another if you're in a situation where you're just using your shift just to move around a little bit quicker or just to give yourself a little bit of healing when you really didn't need it, you're gonna wish that you're gonna have it a lot of times. Um, playing the other side of the engagement when I was playing some Genji, playing against life weavers, uh, the, really the big difference in terms of whether I was going to kill a life weaver or whether I was not gonna kill a life weaver was whether that life weaver was saving their shift and not wasting their shift. So be very careful before you press shift. I know it's a five second cooldown, but it's a lot even like Guardian Angel. Mercy, it was like a 2.5, 1.5 second cooldown, but there were times when Mercies would waste Guardian Angel and wish they had it. Don't do that with your shift. The healing, the mobility is so slight, but it's very, very important if you're being dove. So make sure that you have that shift and you're playing normally, right? Doing your normal stuff. But as soon as you get dove, 
that shift needs to be available to reposition to avoid that pressure It'll avoid winston landing damage avoid diva getting up in your face and mowing you down avoid reaper avoid a genji dash avoid a tracer pulse bomb and so on uh, even avoiding a hammond mine the, 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 there's a trillion things that you can avoid with the shift if you have it all right next on the list of cooldowns is going to be your biotic grasp now this one is honestly very controversial a lot of people myself included have a lot of our doubts about the usefulness and the uh, not the usefulness um i have no doubts about the usefulness of this cooldown but the way that it's balanced in the game but as of right now you can grasp a teammate without their consent <laughs> that sounds so wrong you can pull a teammate without their consent and pull them into where you want to go now the way this needs to be used is you actually need to be trying to track not just their HP, but also the status of their cooldowns and sometimes even their ultimates. I found myself using this more often than not on one of two circumstances. I found this using on a squishy DPS that was being dove, uh, was critical or support, right? That one was super easy. That one was pretty easy to use, right? But then I also found myself using it on tanks. Now, th this tip applies a lot to tanks. If you're, before you grasp your tank, you need to know the status of that tank's cooldowns and the status of that tank's ultimate. Multiple times, I found myself accidentally grasping a Doomfist back who was fixing to use his ultimate, right? He was critical, but he had his ultimate. I needed to know that, that's my fault. Uh, I found myself also seeing my Arisa going in really aggressive. She's getting a little bit low, but she has her fortified. She doesn't need this. It's a mistake to pull Marissa when she still has her fortify. She That is her cooldown, and then after the fortify is done, you should be able to pull her back in. Um, even things like a D.Va bomb, right? Maybe your D.Va's looking for a re -mech bomb. She doesn't need help. Winston Primal Rage. If I pull a Winston back when he's critical, but he has Primal Rage, that is a huge, huge throw. So guys, there's a few tank cooldowns in particular that you need to know, a few tank ultimates that you need to know. You can go down the list. Ramatra, Nemesis Form, Doomfist Ultimate, Primal Rage, Diva de Bomb for remacking, Arisa Fortify, uh, even like Hog Vape, right? Something that you need to be very, very aware of before you commit that pull in. That being said, for DPS and supports, usually if somebody looks like they're under a lot of pressure and are critical, generally it's, you don't have to worry as much about, oh, should I pull them or not? I think things like Tracer Recall, May Ice Block, Reaper Wraith are definitely important, um, but it, it's a lot more egregious with the tank. So try to track your tank's cooldown slash ultimate when it's relevant to know whether they should be pulled in. Because remember, it's not just about you're messing their play up, but you're also using your most valuable and really your most impactful cooldown for something that you didn't even want your team your team didn't even want you to do okay moving on to next from there we're gonna be talking about pedal platform so pedal platform is definitely one of the more interesting cooldowns he has maybe not as impactful as life grip but definitely a lot more spammable um and the way i like to use life grip is unfortunately as it has as par for the course and play overwatch gameplay trailers the way that they want you to use your e is generally not how you're going to be using it more often than not in gameplay the way I found that my E was used the most and versus the Life Weavers that I was playing is actually using it as a self-defense cooldown. Now, we talked a lot about Life Weaver with the shift, being able to kind of keep yourself alive with that. Well, I actually think that his pedal lift may even be stronger as a self-preservation uh, cooldown. It's not just the fact that it repositions you, but it's also the fact that you can actually put it down before you even get pressured. So that delay of applying the cooldown and then being lifted up by the cooldown, you don't even need to wait for it. So for example, if I'm playing versus a dive pop and I'm playing damage, I'm playing healing, I might throw my E next to me and then continue to do what I'm doing, right? Right, just continue to, oh shoot, I'm getting dove. Bang, I immediately lift off, right? And I can speak from experience that even just being in this position, as long as there's not like a hit scan out in the open, that is something you're going to need to consider. But being in this position alone versus like Reapers and Tracers and Genjis and Winstons and Wrecking Balls and Sombras and so on was, was pretty effective. Um, the, the pedal does provide a little bit of cover. Uh, they use cooldowns to get to you. You have this as a get out of jail free card. And then especially when you combine that with your shift, which you should be trying to save in a lot of circumstances, I do think that you have a, a reasonable amount of self survivability, um, at least compared to other supports. So something to consider, make sure that you're using that either uh, defensively most of the time, or also considering putting it next to you so you don't even have to worry about the deploy, right? Because you can also look chat, it's going on cooldown even before I've even used it, right? So I can actually use it whenever I need to, and then look at the cooldown and its expiration date by the time it, ex well, it's not even expires, right? It stays right there. So there's really no downside to just using it and then letting it start to accrue its cooldown while it just sits there, right? You can't obviously have two of them, but there's no reason not to put it next to you just in case you get in trouble, okay? 
Last thing we're gonna talk about is the ultimate, which I think is gonna be huge, huge, like completely used wrong. So the thing with the ultimate is that big initial heal and then the pulse, the pulse. And the pulse is a little bit slower than you think it is. So what I recommend you try to do with your ultimate do not treat this ultimate like transcendence. It is not transcendence. Do not treat this ultimate like sound barrier. It is not sound barrier. It is not going to counter enemy ultimates most of the time. Uh, there will be a few exceptions, I'm sure. Something maybe like a, a Bob uh, provides some cover. It does decent healing. Um, maybe some of the like the, the less DPS intensive ultimates like so uh, might be okay with. But the big value of this ultimate is really two things. One, it's the physical manifestation of a big chunk of HP, right? That you can use to dance and juke and move around, which is helpful. That one, we won't go as much detail how to use it because it's definitely a little bit more nuanced. But the nice thing about this ultimate really is the fact that you can put it really anywhere you want. So I can, if I see a, a fight over there, trance, sound barrier, whatever, takes a little bit of time to get there. Maybe the sound barrier doesn't even reach that far. Trance, definitely is gonna take me forever to get there. But this, I can go wherever I want, especially if I'm placing myself on a high ground, let's say to start with, I can place this to on any location I want. Now, what I found is that um, again, and not doesn't counter ultimate, but I found if like, let's say my Ana is, Ana is getting dove and I can respond quickly enough. I actually found that the ultimate was a lot better at counter and helping somebody win a 1v1 than it was at countering enemy ultimates. The only problem then, of course, is that sometimes during the cast of the ultimate, they die before you even cast it. So even that was risky. The most consistent thing that I found with tree is helping my tank win their tank trade. Winning a tank, winning a 1v1, or when my tank got critical. Um, honestly, it was a little bit of a lackluster ultimate, but the fact that my tank generally didn't get one shot a lot of the time, my tank starts to get really low, I pop tree, I know that tank is going to survive long enough for the tree to cast to benefit from the initial pulse, and then the nice thing about the tree as well is that it lasts a really long time. So not only will that one person get value out of it immediately, but they'll continually, 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 continually get value. So I highly recommend when you're using your tree, don't try to use it to counter enemy ultimates. Instead, I highly recommend trying to use it in a 1v1, 2v2 situation to win really, really crucial skirmishes, whether that's you and somebody else versus the enemy team, maybe some deep diving DPS, that's a great way to use it or to use it in your tank trade, right? Let's say a Ryan versus Ryan, Ramacha versus Arissa, something like that. The healing does really, really start to add up. It just is an ultimate that doesn't get value from a burst. It's not gonna counter a death blossom necessarily. It's gonna be difficult versus a blade. Um, it might not even, it won't counter something like a male either. Um, but if it's allowed to slowly get value because so nobody gets one shot, it does a pretty good job. So hope you found that one helpful. Like I said, these are true as of April. That might change very, very quickly. I think there's a lot of things that are wrong with this hero um, that we might be seeing change in the future. But as of April, hope you guys found this one helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And if you have your own trips, please leave those in the comments as well. And have a good rest of your day.